Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one online platform for creatives. So developing your own film at home brings with it a lot of benefits. It can be extremely fulfilling, flexible, convenient, even more affordable, but uh, it can also be a little bit intimidating if you've never done it before. So I wanted to uh, just make this video today and talk about a few different tips and tricks and also some pieces of gear that I found really helpful just in hopes of helping you simplify the process. This isn't going to be like an A to Z, how to develop a roll of film, just because there's so much of that out there. I'll link uh, to a video below that I found really helpful when I was starting out. Uh, and then also if you are experienced in this and you have any tips that you think could help others, make sure to leave a comment below. But we're gonna talk about 10 different things today and we'll jump into it with the first one. So before we dive into tools, I wanted to start with this. Number one is don't sweat the process. So I want to start with this one very quickly, just because I know that when I first developed film, I was shocked when I opened up the tank at the end and actually saw that it worked. I thought the margin for error was so slim, just in terms of like thinking that I had to like have the developer poured into the tank, like right on the second it had to be, or have these like perfect agitations and perfect technique. And, and obviously I'm not encouraging like sloppiness and laziness, uh, but just know that unless you have some sort of like catastrophic failure where you like zip open the change bag when you're loading your film uh, or you disassemble the Patterson tank or something during development, there's a good chance that everything's gonna turn out fine. And if you miss the mark a little bit on a few of these steps, it's probably not going to have an impact on the final results. So getting into gear, the next point I wanna talk about is buying a starter kit. So obviously if you're just getting into this, you're gonna need all the different tools to develop at home. And uh, the most cost effective way is probably to go and piece them all out individually, potentially used. But uh, if you have the budget, I would highly recommend getting something like this Patterson starter kit. Um, I'll put a link below to the one that I use. Uh, it's nice because it just comes with everything you need. So it'll come with like the Patterson tank. Uh, I think it comes with two reels. Uh, three different graduates, and then it comes with things like, you know, a thermometer, uh, clips for hanging and drying your film. I think it comes with a cassette opener. And then the one that I bought even came with a starter pack of Ilford uh, chemicals, which I'll talk about after. So it's just a really nice way to go. You buy this kit, this box that comes and has everything you need. You don't have to worry about uh, going and researching uh, which brands and which sizes and which specific tools you need. Uh, it's just a way to simplify the process a little bit more. And then the nice thing is, is that like as you grow into the process, you can go and buy uh, different things, upgrade a little bit. So I now have a three reel uh, Patterson tank, which I do two rolls of 120 in. I have some like thousand mil uh, graduates uh, to do four by five and stuff like that. But I still do use this stuff quite often. You know, I'll use the smaller tank if I'm just doing like one roll of 120 or 235 use a thermometer and the clips all the time. So it doesn't go to waste. And it's just a really easy way to get up and running uh, quickly at home. So next up on the tools list is choosing chemicals. So when it comes to chemicals for both black and white and color, there's all sorts of options out there, both powder and liquid form. I would recommend if you're just starting out sticking with liquid. I'm using Ilford DDX and then Ilford's Fixer and Stop Bath. I've been very happy uh, with this developer. I don't think I'll switch to anything else. But for the first rolls that I did, like I said, the Patterson kit that I bought came with this Ilford Simplicity kit. And you can buy this separate as well. It's expensive for what it is. Basically, it's these four pouches. One's a developer, stop bath, fixer, and then this wetting agent. Uh, the first three are basically pre-measured amounts. So you basically just pour the entire pack into the amount of water that it tells you, and it gives you uh, like one round of chemicals to develop, I think two rolls of 35, or one of medium format. So again, expensive for what it is, but I would still recommend it at least once because it just simplifies things and allows you to just uh, get that first roll of film under your belt. And then from there you can go and you can upgrade to something else. So next on the list is a 35 millimeter cassette opener. So this is a really handy tool. This came as well in the kit, but I think you can buy these for like 10 pounds, whatever that is, maybe like 10 US dollars. Uh, obviously if you're shooting 35 millimeter, you need to get your exposed film out of the cassette. There's a couple ways to do that. You can either pry the top off and take the entire spool out, or this is obviously an unexposed uh, roll of film. If this were exposed, this leader would be back in the cassette. You can get a tool that hooks on 
uh, and brings this leader back out and you can pull the film out that way. I know some people have complained about uh, like risking scratching the film when you're pulling it back out. So I personally prefer to just take the entire spool out. So a tool like this, you basically just put on the top like that and it allows you to pry up just like that. See if I can get that in focus. And then from there you can go and you just basically pop that entire spool out, obviously not like that. So just a simple way to remove the top of that 35 mil cassette and get your film out. I know some people have said they use like a bottle opener as well, so there's that option, but uh, I found this is a handy tool, especially for the price. So next on the list for tools is buying a changing tent. So the one thing that a kit won't come with is some sort of change bag or a changing tent. Obviously you need uh, a dark place to load your exposed film onto the reels. Uh, so obviously you can go and you can buy a change bag. This is gonna come down to budget. You know, these things, I got this off Amazon, I think it was like $20. Uh, it works fine, but I would recommend, if you can afford it, buying a changing tent. And I'll show you the one that I have here. Let's see if I can uh, slide some of this stuff out of the way and open this up without exploding everything off my desk. So I'll do this quickly, because obviously it's gonna be super awkward to set this up and talk about it, but basically, this is the one I have. It is a PhotoFlex changing room. I'll put a link to this. Uh, but this is just so handy and why I would recommend this. Uh, it obviously comes in handy for other things in photography like loading sheet film and stuff like that. Uh, but when you're just starting out, obviously working in a dark bag is something that can be uh, a little bit tricky trying to get your exposed film onto the reels. So having something like a changing tent just gives you this extra room where like the bag isn't falling down on top of you. Uh, and that just makes it a little bit easier when you're kind of working there in the dark. And then it allows you as well, I'll get some shots of this after, but just to like set all of your things uh, in different places. So with this changing tent, I'll often have my uh, reel set up, ready to go uh, in the front here, the film beside it, and then the tank and the tank accessories at the back. So when I go into this bag, there's lots of room. I know my reels here, I know my films here, and I can go and just start working with everything. And it's not like with the change bag where, uh, especially a smaller one like that, everything's just kind of in there. It's easy for things to kind of uh, get sloppy and all over the place and the bags falling on top of you. So if you can afford a changing tent, I would recommend it. It's a really handy tool. I think it's a good investment for any film photographer. So next up is trimming 35 millimeter film. So one of the most intimidating parts, I think, of the developing process for beginners is loading your film onto the reel because obviously you're doing this in a change bag or a change tent and it can be a little bit finicky and difficult. It definitely gets easier with more practice. I find it very easy now. Uh, but one thing when you're loading 35 millimeter film, this can be really handy. So uh, you have the leader here, this curved part. You want to cut that off, obviously. Uh, so you have just a, a flat edge to work with. But what can be really handy then is going and actually just trimming, let's see if I can get this in focus again, trimming these corners here, just on an angle, right through the sprocket hole. I'll get a close up of this. So basically you're just cutting through uh, the sprocket on an angle, just like that. And then that allows you when you go to load the film on the actual reel, it just helps load it on there a little bit more smooth and avoid uh, anything getting hung up. Obviously this is a little bit of a mess here trying to show you all. And obviously you're gonna be doing this in a change bag by feel, but I found just using that little trick of kind of cutting those edges on an angle whenever I've gone to load 35 millimeter into a reel, it's always gone very smooth and you avoid just uh, like the risk of it binding up uh, or twisting or anything like that. So very simple but handy little trick. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the tools. Next, we're gonna jump into talking about the actual process. But before we do that, I just very quickly wanna talk about uh, the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for a couple of years now. I currently use it for my contact sheet podcast website. I'm also building a new portfolio site with it. What I love about it is just uh, the flexibility and how easy it is to use. And then also just the wide range of templates, the variety it gives me. So I can use something a little more complicated for the podcast website, but then use a nice, just simple, clean template when I'm building out a portfolio. So check out squarespace.com today if you're interested in making a website or a new portfolio. And then when you're ready to launch, you can use the link squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. 
Anyways, let's jump into talking about the process. So the first tip is choose a process and stick with it. So when it comes to the actual development process, again, just like everything with film developing, it can be overly complicated. There's so many different ways to do it. What I would recommend though, if you're just starting out, is just stick to the manufacturer's instructions. So simple, so straightforward. So for me, uh, like I said, using Ilford DDX and then using Ilford Stop Path and Fixer, Whenever I go to develop, obviously I've memorized this now and you will very quickly, but uh, I would just go to Ilford's website, look up the sheet for DDX, uh, look at the film that I'm using, and it'll tell me how long I need to develop for and at what temperature. And then for their fixer and their stop bath, uh, it gives instructions in terms of uh, timing, how long you need to do it for, how often you need to agitate and things like that. So very straightforward. I've had great results doing that and don't overcomplicate it. Just whichever set of chemicals you decide to buy, go to the manufacturer's website and just stick to their recommendations. So the next tip for process is an app that I use called Massive Dev. So I actually shared this in a video I did a while ago about film photography apps, but uh, Massive Dev Chart is, in, is a website where you can basically go, uh, it's for black and white developing, and you can look up like any film and developer combination and it'll give you developing time uh, as well as uh, fixing, rinsing, and things like that. But they have an app and it's just really handy. What I like about this is you basically go into the app and it has this massive list of films. So you can uh, choose your film, so I'm actually gonna develop a, a roll of film here in a little bit, uh, Ilford HP5 Plus, and then it wants you to choose your developer. So I will go to Ilford DDX. It'll ask me what ISO I want to develop at. Uh, I actually shot this HP5 at 800, so I'm gonna select that. And now it adds it to my list here. So I have this massive list here of all these uh, like saved uh, film and developer combos that I use. But when I click on that, it basically now gives me all of these set timers. So it gives me my development time, my stop bath, my fixing. Uh, and it's just a really handy way to basically have this resource to find out development times, but also this app that sets you timers for everything right away. So again, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You could just use the stopwatch on your phone. I know there's other apps as well, uh, but I found massive dev chart just to be a, a really good resource and just also super handy and a quick way to set things up uh, pretty easy. So next up is a mug and a thermometer. This is something that I want to talk about quickly just because the whole idea of getting your chemicals to a specific temperature can be uh, a little bit daunting when you're first starting out trying to figure out what the right way to do that is. Obviously if you're shooting color you have to be very precise. You have to put your chemicals in, a, in an actual bath with uh, water running in consistently at like the specific temperature you need. With black and white, there's a little bit more flexibility. So all that I've ever worried about is that I'm using the right temperature water to mix in with my chemicals. And the process that I do for that is I have the thermometer that came with the Ilford kit. And then I just take a mug and I put this mug under the tap and I basically run the taps with the thermometer in there uh, until I'm getting a consistent 20 degrees, which is what the temperature for black and white developing uh, is re recommended to be. As soon as it gets to 20, I'll let it run for like an, an extra 30 seconds just to make sure that the water coming out is consistent. And then I'll just use this mug and I'll pour the water into my graduates until I get to the, the right amount that I need. So it's just a really simple way instead of, you know, trying to fill up your graduates, take a temperature, pouring it out. I use this mug almost as like my base, keep my thermometer in there, run the taps until I hit the temperature and then use the mug to uh, fill up my graduates. And then I just pour my chemicals in from there and those sit during the process and it's fine. I've never had any issues like that whatsoever. So highly recommend you'll get a thermometer if you buy that kit. Obviously you're gonna need one regardless. Use a mug, fill it up, stick this in and then use the mug to divvy out the water. So quick one for this next tip and this is all about the tap. This isn't the tap when it comes to water. This has to do with agitation. So uh, for me, I use the recommended uh, procedure for agitation for these chemicals, which uh, is every minute agitate for 10 seconds. And that's like usually four agitations. But then what I do afterwards is when I'm done the fourth, I give it just a couple taps, usually on the floor. You don't have to be like violent or anything with it. But what that does is it just helps dislodge 
uh, any air bubbles that might have stuck to the surface of the film during agitation. And there's other ways to do this. I know some people will use like a twist method while they agitate to avoid the bubbles, but this is just like a very simple habit that you'll build up as you do this. And it's a good way just to ensure that you don't have any of those bubbles that are created uh, sticking to the surface of your film. Okay, the last tip for this video, and this is an important one, is just talking about avoiding water spots and also drying your film. So the first couple rolls that I developed at home, I just had like a nightmare with water spots. It was awful, the film uh, was just covered in them. I have really hard water here. So ever since, what I do now is I do uh, like the standard wash or rinse procedure, which is like four to five minutes of this just running under the tap. But what I do after that is I pour out that rinse water and then I take uh, deionized water, you can use uh, distilled water, I fill up the tank once with it, pour it out, fill it up once more, and then I use uh, Ilford's wetting agent. This actually came with that simplicity kit and I'll just put like one or two drops in, give the spool a little bit of a spin, and then I'll pour that water out. Uh, and then when I take the actual reel out of the tank, I'll give it a couple bangs on the side of the uh, sink while the film's still loaded in there. I'll pull the film out and then I actually just hold the film and I give it a big uh, shake to try and get uh, any excess water off. And then I go and I hang the film just using the clips that come in the Ilford kit. So one of these is unweighted, one is weighted. Obviously you put the weighted one at the bottom, this one at the top, hang it off the door. And then I usually go and I turn uh, the shower, crank it to hot for like a minute, build up a bunch of steam, turn the shower off, close the door, come back in two to three hours. And ever since I've started doing this practice, uh, with the rinse like that and then also hanging the film and using the steam from the shower I've just had like perfectly flat negatives no dust no water spots at all So it's just these simple things, you know Establishing this workflow at the end using that distilled water or something like a wetting agent uh, and hanging your film properly uh, That will avoid a ton of headaches afterwards because the last thing you want is uh, this nice exposed and developed film that is covered in water spots and dust Okay, so those are 10 things that I think hopefully will help you if you're thinking of getting in to developing film, or if you're already doing it, maybe you take a few things away. But uh, like I said before, the process really isn't that complicated. And if you've been thinking of trying it out, uh, just go for it, buy the things you need. And I think you'll be very surprised at how easy it actually is and how rewarding it is. So anyways, hope this helped. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, and until next time, just wanna say thank you. And I'll talk to you soon.